In the last two lectures, we completed fixed bias configuration. The next type of configuration is ammeter bias configuration. The only difference between ammeter bias configuration and the fixed bias configuration is resistance RE. We introduce ammeter resistance to improve the stability of the operating point. We improve the stability of the operating point by introducing the ammeter resistance RE. I will explain how stability is improved in this configuration as compared to the fixed bias configuration. But first we will find out coordinates of the operating point ICQ and VCEQ. The Q stands for the QSN point or the operating point. To calculate ICQ or IC the collector current we have to apply KVL in the input loop. So we have VCC minus drop across resistance RB which is equal to IBRB minus VBE minus VBE minus drop across resistance RE which is equal to IERE equal to 0 volts because potential of ground is equal to 0 volts. I will use this equation to calculate the base current IB and once we have IB we can easily calculate the collector current IC. We already know the ammeter current IE is equal to IC plus IB and IC is equal to beta times IB beta times IB. So the ammeter current is simply equal to beta plus 1 times the base current this is what we have. We can replace IE by beta plus 1 IB so that we can calculate the base current IB. So from this equation we have VCC minus IBRB minus VBE minus beta plus 1 beta plus 1 times IBRE equal to 0 and from these two terms I will take IB common so we have VCC, we have VCC minus IB inside the bracket, we have RB plus beta plus 1 times RE minus VBE equal to 0. So IB is simply equal to VCC minus VBE divided by, divided by RB plus inside the bracket beta plus 1 Re. So this is the expression of base current and collector current IC is equal to beta times the base current. We have base current and if we multiply this by beta we have the collector current IC. The next thing is the calculation of voltage VCE and for this I will use KVL in the output loop so let's see what we have after using the KVL in the output loop. We have VCC, VCC minus drop across this resistance is equal to ICRC, ICRC minus VCE, VCE minus drop across the ammeter resistance is equal to IE, RE equal to 0. And by using this equation, we can easily calculate voltage VCE. IE is nearly equal to the collector current. The ammeter current is nearly equal to the collector current. So we can replace ammeter current by the collector current. So we have IC, RC or I can take collector current common from these two terms. So inside the bracket, we have RC plus RE minus VCE equal to 0 and finally we have VCE equal to VCC minus inside the bracket RC plus RE multiplied with multiplied with the collector current IC. So this is the expression of the voltage VCE. We have already derived the expression of IC and by using that expression we can calculate IC. Once we have IC we will put it here to calculate the value of VCE. 
the next thing is the advantage of using ammeter resistance the next thing is the advantage of using of using ammeter resistance re we don't want the operating point to change once operating point is fixed we don't want it to change and if collector current ic changes this implies the operating point the q point will also change because collector current is one of the coordinates of the operating point the collector current will change because of two things the first thing is the temperature if temperature increases this implies the collector current will also increase because the collector current ic is equal to beta times ib plus plus beta plus 1 times icbo icbo is the leakage current or the reverse saturation current and it only depends on the minority charge carriers when temperature increases number of minority charge carriers will increase and also icbo and when icbo increases from this equation you can see collector current also increases let's see how the introduction of ammeter resistance re will save us from this situation when collector current ic increases this implies the drop ie re will also increase because collector current is nearly equal to the ammeter current and because of this this drop this drop will also increase and when this drop increases the base current the base current will decrease from the first equation from the first equation you can see the base current ib the base current ib is equal to vcc minus vbe minus ie re divided by resistance rb and when this drop ie re increases this implies the base current decreases and when base current decreases when base current decreases this implies the collector current will also decrease because collector current is equal to beta times the base current so the increment in the collector current because of increase in temperature is equally compensated by the decrement in the base current so because of introduction of re the ammeter resistance the temperature will no longer have effect on the collector current and the ammeter resistance is playing its role in this drop the next thing the next thing is the beta value when beta value changes the collector current will also change because ic is equal to beta times ib so when beta changes the collector current will also change and let's see how resistance re help us in this situation the collector current ic is equal to beta times vcc minus vbe divided by rb plus inside the bracket beta plus one times re this is the expression of collector current and you can see beta plus one is nearly equal to beta beta is a large value so beta plus one is nearly equal to beta so we have collector current ic equal to beta vcc minus vbe divided by rb plus beta times re and let's say let's say beta times re is much larger than the resistance rb so we can neglect this resistance and we only have beta times re in the denominator and the beta in numerator will cancel out with beta in denominator so we have ic the collector current independent of beta the collector current is independent of beta this expression is independent of beta so there is no effect on the collector current if you change the transistor because the collector current is independent of the current amplification factor the next thing is the disadvantages of this circuit in order to have the collector current independent of beta we must follow this condition beta times re must be greater than the resistance rb and most of the times beta is unknown to us so to achieve this condition we must make the resistance re very high 
or we can make the resistance R be very low. Because of making the resistance R e very high, we have to keep the biasing potential high and this will increase the cost and also the precautions. The next thing is regarding the low value of the resistance R b. Because of this, the reverse bias of the collector base junction will reduce. So this is the disadvantage of this configuration. In the next lecture, we will solve one example based on ammeter bias configuration. So see you in the next lecture.